be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. Come on, I'm going to be a lawyer. Anybody know to be a lawyer? I'm going to be the judge. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be the jury. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be the chief. I shut out the chief prosecutor. Because when the one that came and tried to prosecute you, he would almost step and I'm going to be the chief prosecutor. watching on social media this morning. You may be facing something, but the Spirit of God just said he's the chief prosecutor. That means he'll step in the shoes of the prosecutor. And the one that's trying to come against you, God will step in his shoes and make him say, case dismissed. We have nothing to hold them. Come on, somebody. Because he's the chief. Oh, my God. And I don't care who it is that's coming up against you. God will step in. I seen it done, y'all. Yeah. I said, I seen it done, y'all. Yeah. I, I seen it myself. I seen it do it. Yeah. Yeah. The prayers of the righteous still avail much. I tell you, we got testimonies of folk. I know why God is dwelling here because somebody need this word this morning. Somebody, God is trying to stir up your most holy faith this morning to believe that God can do what it is you need him to do. No matter what it is that men say, God got the fire to say. I say, God got the final say. They talk about the 11th hour. God moves best in the 11th hour. Can you hold on to the 11th hour? Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, somebody out here in the Holy Ghost say, can you hold on to the 11th hour? My God, my God. Everybody fear the 11th hour. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. But the Spirit said, can you hold on? Can you hold on to the 11th hour? I got works and things that seem impossible. Ooh, just when it's about to be over, he'll step in. Somebody has your neighbor, can't just hold out to the 11th hour. Oh, I know God is getting ready to bless somebody this morning. I said to Elder Levita, I said, Elder Levita, what is the word that God has in your mouth? Because see, I know what God speaks to me, and I know when he speaks it to me, he'll give a witness. Mm -hmm. And God put in her mouth what he had spoke to me. See, because the Spirit of God is saying this morning that you must understand that by the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus sealed the deal. Whatever you're going through, you ain't got to be worried. You ain't got to, to look at your situation that cause you to fear. Because the blood of Jesus already sealed the deal. It's already done. Tell yourself it's a done deal. My blood already sealed it. And see, when something is executed, it cannot be undone. Come on, somebody. Unless both parties agree. Oh, come on, we're going to walk this this morning. When, uh, when something is executed, it cannot be undone unless both parties agree. Therefore, I know the God that I serve, he don't never go back on his word. That means that the word that he has spoke on your life, it must come to pass. Because he will not agree to anything other than what he said. Come on, somebody. He's not going to agree to what you want if what you want don't align with what he said. Amen. 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 So we can stop the, ba stop the battle right there. Amen. Amen. Stop the battle right there. I tell you, open your Bibles and go be the first Corinthians. Chapter 2. Come on. The blood done already sealed the deal. What you worried about? What you fearing? Why you doubting? Stop. The blood done already sealed the deal. Everything God has spoken over your life, it's already a done deal. The only thing that can slow it down is you. Come on, somebody. You can slow it down, but God going to have his way one way or the other. Because the will of God must be done. Come on, somebody. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says wisdom. We're talking about the wisdom of God's gift. And it says, and I, brethren, this is Paul, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I 
determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So he said, I ain't coming with no excellent speech. I'm not coming as a scholar of, come on somebody. I'm not coming claiming to know all things. He said, all I'm coming is saying, I'm coming saying, save Jesus Christ. You got to be saved. Come on somebody. He said, I'm coming just to preach Jesus and Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. Come on somebody. And that's what the church has got to get back to today. We got to get back to preaching Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. Come on. The blood that was shed on Calvary. What he did just for us. Come on. We want to talk about what we deserve, but we don't understand what he went through to get us to what we deserve. Come on, church. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. I didn't listen to my Shabbat. The Spirit of God said the world, the world understands the power, the power of blood. I said the world, I'm going to slow that on for a minute because I don't want this to go over your head. Because we the church, we take blood lightly. We take the power of this thing that's running through our veins lightly. We take the power of the blood of Jesus, we take that lightly. But the world understands the power of blood. How do I know that? Apostle, how do you know that? If you drive, I drove down the street yesterday. I was driving all over the place yesterday. I had so many things to do. And, and why did I see so many dead chickens in the road? All throughout the city. There's one over there, there's one over there, there's one over there. And I said, what in the world? What's all these dead chickens in the road? Now, I ain't stupid. I know what it means. But that tells you the world understands the power of love. We the church, we just take the blood that Jesus shed, which is all power. Come on, somebody. That blood has all power. Come on. It got more power than the blood of a chicken. I said, I, I said, oh, my God. All power. And we take for granted the power of the blood that was shed on Calvary. The blood gave us the right to speak over every evil act, every evil deed. That blood gave us the power of all. Come on, church. Are you sure? We take this thing for granted. I, I mean, we just living and just flowing through life like, like, like we just here. And, and there's so many things, Elder, the Spirit of God said, we got to wake up the people because there's so much going around us that we can't see. There's more going on around you, church, that you can't see than there's going on that you're looking at. Hold on, I said, I need to tell y'all something. You get mad about some of the stuff you can see. Honey, if you can only see the stuff that's going on that you can't see, it's a whole candle of what you're looking at. Mm. Ah, yeah, shut up. That's why the Spirit of God said, we got to become more spiritual. Come on, we got to become more spiritual. See, the enemy will put up things in front of you to distract you, stuff you can look at. Meanwhile, he got a whole other world going on around you that he's forming and shaping all the way around you. He's putting forces around you. He's, oh, no, shut up. This is a little deep for somebody. But it's where the church has got to go. Because while we run and jump and shout and get mad at what we're looking at, honey, there's more going on than that. The enemy is entangling you in your survivors. Oh, oh my God. That's why I say to folk minister, I say, if you're mad about that, honey, you don't, you don't know. You got something bigger than that going on that, that you, you, you should really be mad at. If you can see what's going on, you, 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 throw, you throw your head and turn your eyes from that and you start dealing with that over there. Come on, because all that that you can see is a distraction. Come on, somebody. And it said here, it, it said, it said, it said, for I, verse two, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So in other words, I was I was where you at. Huh? I'm not better than you. I was I know I know the fear you're experiencing, but you can't stay there. I know the doubt that you're having, but you can't stay there. Oh my God, my God. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> I know it looked like sometimes God ain't gonna do it, but you can't stay there. You gotta say the blood done already sealed the deal. The blood done already made the way. The blood done already cleared the path. The blood done already unlocked every lock. Oh, come on, somebody. You can't tell them you can't stay there. You got to get up from there. Come on, you gotta, we, we gotta, those who are weak, those who are strong got to bear the infirmities of the weak. Come on, don't you pat somebody who's weak and say it's all right. No, it ain't all right. Come on, sister, let me help you get 
get up from there. Come on, brother, let me help you get on up from there. Because it ain't going to die like that. Ah, the strong got to bear the infirmities of the weak. I'm not going to pet you up. Because you're going to die if I leave you there. See, folk get mad when folk want to tell you, no, come on up out of here. They say, why aren't you feeling for me? Why aren't you, ain't you going to pray? No, I ain't going to pray. I'm going to speak. Everybody wants you to stop and pray. What, 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 what's going on in my life? Can, can, can you just pray? No, I ain't going to pray. No, I'm not going to pray for you. Because number one, you already know that ain't where you belong. That ain't your state of being. That's not who God calls you. See, if we stop being more honest with folk, don't come up out of this stuff a lot quicker. doing too much praying over what God done already spoke. And he want us to start speaking. So you can't pet the enemy. You can't pet up the enemy. It's okay. It's all, no, it's not okay. No, it ain't. It ain't okay. Come on, we got to get to the place we say it ain't okay. It is not okay. Get up from there. Get yourself together. Shake yourself. Wake yourself up. Come on, somebody. So you got to start speaking the truth to one another. Amen. In love. Y'all heard of that? Speak truth to one another, but you must speak it in love. Not in a judgmental. See, the Holy Ghost just said, you got to say that in love because many folks will say, I'm just going to tell you how. I didn't know, honey, you check your spirit. You ain't got the power to tell me nothing because your spirit is right. You ain't coming in the manner of God. The manner of God is love. Oh, I tell you all the time, you got to come to folk the way you want folk to come to you. Come on, somebody. Verse 4 said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power. So I'm not coming. You ain't got to keep coming like you know everything. You know, when you get your mic preaches, you ain't got to preach like you know the Bible inside and out. You ain't got to say words that people don't understand, words that you can't even spell. Come on, there's just too much of this foolishness going on. Have the words that some preachers get up and say, I'd like to ask them to spell it. <coughs> Too much foolishness going on. You can say it, but you can't spell it. Don't even know what it means. You just heard somebody else say it. Come on, church. Somebody say, tell the truth. I tell you that in love. Come on, somebody. And it said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. So you don't have to prove anything to man. You don't have to prove you're anointed. You, you don't have to prove, you don't, you don't have to do that. And how can I tell you that? Because it was a time, I know when we grew up, that's what we did. And if everybody was honest and you've been in this long enough, you can say you did that too. Huh? You live for, for the church mother to say, you're doing good, baby. You live for the pastor to say, I see God in you. Come on. Come on. How do you live for that? Well, honey, let me tell you something. I don't live for nobody to tell me what they see. I live for God to get the glory out of me. For God to get the glory out of me. Come on, somebody. And it says, verse 6, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. See, God will share with his people his mysteries. Great right are the mysteries. Of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Received up into glory. Come on my God. Hallelujah. Great are the mysteries. Glory to God. And if you want to know more about who your God is. And how your God functions in your life. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Don't sit back and say, well, I don't know. Ain't nobody telling me. Honey, you ain't, I ain't going to wait for nobody to tell me how to get from earth to heaven. Come on, I, I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to get in my prayer. I'm going to turn down my plate. I'm going to get so hungry to know the move of God for my life. Seek him and you 
shall find. Come on, somebody. Not and the door shall be open. Come on now. And it said, and so that means it leaves us no excuse. I said it leaves us no excuse. Well, they didn't tell me. I had nobody to read the Bible to me and I couldn't read. Well, if I look back in the days, years ago, there were folk who couldn't read, but they had a relationship with God. They knew how to talk to God. So that tells me that if you can't read a word, you can talk to him and he'll talk back to you. Come on, somebody. Ain't no excuse for not knowing your God. My God, my God. Somebody said, well, I didn't go to seminary. I don't know the word like that. I didn't go to cemetery either. <laughs> now some folks gonna get mad because when you ain't truly anointed and you go to seminary, you go there and you learn man's ways. You learn how to shape the word the way man told you how to shape the word. That's why I say you go to cemetery. Now for those of y'all who are anointed and you go to seminary and walk out anointed as you were when you walked in, and you can take it but know how far to leave it. Come on, somebody. You know how they say when you take the fish, you eat the meat and spit out the bones? Yeah. Now for those of y'all who go to seminary and can eat the meat and spit out the bones, good for you. Now God can use you. But there comes a time when you got to let God be God in you. You got to say, God, show me you. Show me. He is his word. Come on, somebody. He said, I want to speak. Come on. That's the problem. Nobody's letting God. Ain't nobody hearing God no more. They're too busy telling you what God is trying to say. Yeah. Well, according to this word, I believe that God is saying up to his people. Just shut up long enough for him to talk. Shut up long enough for him to talk to you. God is saying, I got a word for my people, but they're not letting me speak. Oh, hallelujah. Preachers grabbed that word. He said, I got a word for my people, but you got to let me speak. You get too fancy. Holy Ghost said, you get too fancy, you ain't let me speak. Speak, Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Yes, God. He said, he said, he said, in verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they knew, if they only knew. I can, I can preach that right there, if they only knew. People are God, if they only knew who you really are. If your enemies only knew, if they only had an idea who you are. If they only had an idea who the God is in you, they wouldn't have done you the way they did you. Ah, I said they wouldn't have said what they said about you. Huh? I said they wouldn't have acted the way they acted towards you. If they only had an idea as to who you really are. Who the God in you really is. But the way he's going to manifest himself and they understand that he's more powerful than what they're doing is by how you respond. Amen. Is anybody seeing God in you by your response? Can you look your enemy in the face and still say you love him? Oh, that's hard, y'all. Ain't that hard? That, come on, tell the truth. But when you really have God in you, you understand that the more evil they are, the more God they need. Yes. Come on, I, I, I said I can, you can be empathetic, but not sympathetic. You ain't getting no sympathy because, like I said, you need to come on up out of there. But I can see you where you are trying to help you up out of there. Amen, somebody. Come on. It's a done deal. Even their salvation is a done deal. The word of God said it's not his will that anybody should perish. That means salvation is there for even your enemy. Come on now. Oh, this is a tough word, but it's the truth. Come on, somebody. Now, I love this part right here. And it says, but as it is written, I have not seen. E-Y-E. -E. <laughs> I love it. I have not seen. If they only knew what they did to Jesus, if they only knew the outcome, if they only know the outcome of your life, oh my God, I hear your Holy Ghost. See, there's some folk that counted you out because of where you are right now. Some folk that counted you out because of where you come from, where you been. But if they only could see where God is taking you, 
if they can only see the outcome. Did I tell you that there is an outcome? Oh, there's an end to this. Come on, somebody. Oh, there's an outcome. Oh, there's an outcome. There is an outcome to all this. He said, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. All I can tell you, honey, is keep on loving God. Don't stop. Don't stop loving God. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter what it feels like. Come on. Don't you stop loving God. God got more to this story than what your natural eye can see. Oh, it's not going to end the way man thinks it's going to end. See, people look at you now and want to put a period. Say, that's who you are. That ain't No, 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 honey, that's a comma. That's a comma. Put a little tail on that period. Because that's a comma. Somebody said, don't you put no period, because when you put a period, God has a little tail on it and becomes a comma, because he ain't done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to put a little tail on your period. He said, I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. So men don't have the power. Come on, somebody. They don't have the power to tell you that where you are now is where you're going to be. That's a lie, honey. God put a little break in there. Because I'm getting ready to take it to the other side. Oh, shit. I give my mind. I'm getting ready to take it to the other side of this. Come on, church. Come on, church. He said, I'm getting ready to take it to the other side of this. See, the comma, it separates two thoughts. Come on now. So, I'm I, 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 Your mind may have been in this place on this side. I'm getting ready to carry you up and over. Come on. So, you'll have the mind of Christ on the other side of this comma. You're going to believe what I say on the other. You're going to walk out with, oh, come on, church. You're going to live in what I said. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I have the Holy Ghost is talking. He said, you, and when he does that, you got to leave your enemies on the other side of the comma. You got to leave your enemies where they thought you were going to stay. You got to leave them on the other side. Oh, come on, come on. You got to get those shots. The problem is when God blessed you to come on the other side, you want to carry your enemies with you. And then you got to go through another long period. Come on, somebody. Until the next time they throw a period, God said, I still ain't done yet. Hopefully this time you'll learn. Come on, child. You leave them on that side and you pray for them. But I gotta go over and see what God said about my life. I'm walking in it. I'm living it. The problem is y'all carrying too many folk with you on the other side that ain't supposed to be here. And then you let them stay around there long enough. They'll put that little tail off that period. And that comma will become a period again. Because you brought them over there. You're gonna start diving again, you're gonna start being who you are again. Next thing you know, you right back to where you were before God had put a comma to carry you over. Now you carry what was over there, over here. Spirit of God said, You gotta let some spirits go, y'all. And, and, and I hear God saying this because He said, He said, his, with His blood already sealed the deal, that means He's got things that He's already put in place for you. And He's trying to get them to you. But you keep carrying the same demons that's been holding you down for the last 15 of God when they're cursed. I said they cannot, be, they cannot receive the blessing of God when they're cursed. Therefore, I hope y'all are seeing this so clearly. Therefore, when you fail to detach and you want to stay attached, that curse that is on them now comes on you. Because you are walking in disobedience. 
You refuse to let go of what God told you to detach from. So now you go from being in a blessed place to being in a cursed place because you're disobedient. Oh, we can't say it no plainer than that. Holy Ghost, we can't make it no more plainer than that. So God said, now it's time, people of God, we got to understand that everything God has already sealed the deal. You're healing. Oh, and I'm going to tell y'all, let's see, all is well. Yes, three powerful words that I had to count because I just said, I didn't stop to think how many words it was. Three powerful words that God told me to speak. Anytime I feel like I'm not feeling well, he gave me these three words to speak and things turn quick. Anytime you get a thought in your mind that you know when the thought of God, you're going to speak these three words and I'm going to give them to you. And all of a sudden, things turn. Anytime the enemy try to tell you something bad getting ready to happen, you got to speak these three words and all of a sudden, it will turn. Woo! He said, say, all is well. All right. Receive those three words. All is well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I say it, I say it, and I speak, not waiting to find out. I say it, and I speak to whatever it is. And I don't care if the devil tells you something bad, get ready to happen. All is well. That means I cancel out what I shut up. I cancel out. It cannot happen now because all. Sure not. <laughs> huh? That ain't funny, but it's the truth. 
Come on. Like you gotta just say, God, the doctor tells me and I know how to target my prayer. Amen. I know what to speak over. That's all. Amen. They tell you you're gonna lose your job. They cutting back. Don't go getting scared. What are you getting scared for? You say, all is well. All, all is well. All is because the God that I serve, he knows all things. All is well. You gotta get to that place in your life, kingdom. No matter what it is, don't fall into the black hole. Don't fall into it. Don't fall into what that pit looks like. Don't, don't fall, because our emotions can drag us down. And, 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 then, and then what's gonna happen? The enemy just gonna start telling you other stuff and gonna start having you see, the, see stuff and believe stuff and you're gonna start feeling, no, get up out of there. All is well. Because what God has for me, I has not seen. That means it ain't gonna end the way it is right now. Some folk gonna wish they were in your life five years from now. Ah, but I tell y'all what God is doing. Where God has you, he has you now is to show you who's who. Y'all heard that? Y'all hear that? It's showing you who's who. So when God bless you, you know not, you know where not to sow your seed. He's showing you who's who. He showed you the heart. See, that's why you don't count nobody out because you don't know where they're gonna be five years from now. You don't know where they're going to be 10 years from now. Huh? Come on. I have not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared. <laughs> I gotta make sure I gotta make sure I read that right. Because see, some people, they read that and they say what God has in store. Big difference of in store and prepared. That's how you got to read the word for the word. That's how you got to be careful reading some of these versions. Huh? No man has it in, in his heart. He can't even think in his heart. Well, God has prepared. That means God got something special just for you. That may be different than what he has for you. That may be different. He, he took time and he prepared it. Just for you. For those who love him. Somebody say, but you gotta love him. But you gotta love him. And I'm gonna leave it right there because see, the blood has sealed the deal. Everything in your life, every situation in your life is already done. It's already done. I come to tell you that this morning. Everything that you need in your life, every door, every way, God already made it. So stop banging your head against the wall. Stop trying to figure it out. Just tell God, thy will be done. Thy will. Thy will be. It's so much easier when you learn how to lean on Jesus. Amen. Thy will be done. He said, it has not even entered into the heart of man. But it's already done. He prepared it already. I said, he prepared it already. That's like you hungry right now. Ain't nothing like being hungry and you go home and your dinner's already prepared. Ain't that a good feeling? Yeah, <laughs> yeah living hungry is the same way. Yeah. See, it's so much easier when you ain't got to go home and peel the potatoes. Come on, somebody. It's so much easier when you ain't got to go home and clean the chicken. Snap the beans. Come on. You can go home and it's already done for you. Just pull your chair to the table. Wash your hands. Please, my, my, my grandmother, wash your hands when you come to the table. Wash your hands and put your chair to the table. It's already prepared. That's how salvation is. So stop going through trying to do things your way. That's too much work. Understand that your life is already written. Though the day I leave this earth, I will always say this. Your life is already written because God knew the end before the beginning when he created you. Yeah. Your life is already written. Stop trying to rewrite the bestseller. Come on, somebody. You can't rewrite the bestseller. God has already written your life. Your life is written. Just lean and depend on Jesus. And in everything in your life, say, Lord, let your will be done. That's the secret right there. 
they have a book out called The Secret. And that book is based on the Bible. But the greatest secret that I can tell you is to always say, Lord, let your will be done. Amen, somebody? Amen. The deal is already sealed. The blood sealed the deal. Whatever you need in your life, God is already taking care of it. You just got to line up. Tell your neighbor, line up. Just line up with the word. And say, Lord, let thy will be done in me. We say, Lord, I'm available to you. I will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Do use me, Lord. I thank you for my strength. 
In all things I give God thanks. For the little things, for the great things. Look around, look at your children, look at your grandchildren, look at yourself. And say, Lord, I thank you. I didn't have to be here, but I'm here. Come on, somebody. I didn't have to be walking with peace of mind, but I got it. Woo, my God. People, don't pay to have the peace that you have. And when I don't have the peace, I know where to run. So I run to the rock of my salvation. I run to the builder, to the stone that the builders rejected. I know how to run to Jesus. And he'll hear my humble cry. And one thing I can tell y'all in my 56 years, he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you, people of God. He'll never leave you. Don't walk away from God. We need God now more than we ever needed him before. God's proven himself to you. Now he's calling for you to prove yourself to him. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Yeah, Come on, think back. When I'm back. 